Welcome to Severity 201, the third module in the Securium Bootcamp. In this module, we'll be taking a look at 100 more concepts related to Severity, following on from the second module. We will take a look at the various inheritance aspects supported by Solidity. We will then revisit the EVM storage and uh, memory aspects and understand how Solidity features map to those concepts. And finally, we will take a look at the various libraries that one often encounters with smart contracts written in Solidity. To revisit the level setting of expectations from this material, Treat these videos as visual walkthroughs, summaries of the written material provided. There's a lot of ground to cover, a lot of details, a lot of nuances. We won't be able to go into all those during these videos. So look at these videos with reference to the written material provided. And in your time, depending on the expertise and the interest levels, dive deeper into each of these concepts as much as you can, look at the illustrative examples provided in the various references, and even better, try to code up some smart contracts that explore these concepts to get a better understanding. So with that, let's take a look at these concepts. Recall that Solidity is an object-oriented programming language, so it supports various aspects of inheritance. It supports multiple inheritance and polymorphism. These are concepts that uh, you may be familiar with if you have uh, studied other object-oriented programming languages. So a lot of those uh, aspects are very similar in Solidity as well. Polymorphism means that a function call executes the function of the specified name and the parameter types in the most derived contract in the inheritance hierarchy. And when a contract inherits from multiple other contracts, only a single contract is created on the blockchain, with the code from all the base contracts compiled into the created contract. Solidity supports function overriding, which means that uh, functions in the base classes can be overridden by those in the derived classes, which can change their behavior if they're marked as virtual using the virtual keyword. The overriding function must then use uh, the override keyword to specify that it's overriding the virtual function in the base classes. Languages that allow multiple inheritance have to solve some of the problems related to that aspect. One of them is known as the diamond problem. And this is solved in Solidity very similar to how it is solved in Python using what is known as C3 linearization that forces a specific order in the directed acyclic graph constructed from the base classes. Take a look at this uh, in some of the references provided to understand how this works. But at a high level, when a function is called that is defined multiple times in different contracts in the base and derived classes, the given bases are searched in a specific order from right to left in a depth first manner and stopping at the first match that is found. The difference between how Solidity implements this versus Python is uh, Solidity searches these classes from right to left in the specified order as opposed to left to right in Python. Besides the typical contracts supported by Solidity, it also supports three other contract types. And those are abstract contracts interfaces and libraries. Abstract contracts are where at least one of the functions in the contract is not implemented. These are specified using the abstract keyword. Interfaces, on the other hand, cannot have any of the functions implemented within them. And there are more restrictions. They cannot inherit from other contracts, 
all the declared functions must be external. They cannot declare a constructor. They cannot have any state variables. And these are specified using the interface keyword. Libraries are meant to be deployed only once at a specific address, and the callers call the libraries using the delegate call opcode that we talked about in uh, the EVM aspect of the Ethereum module as well as in uh, the previous Solidity module. This means that if library functions are called, their code is executed in the context of the calling contract. Libraries are specified using the library keyword. So these contract types are encountered very often when uh, you look at smart contracts and Solidity. Solidity supports a using for directive. Let's take a look at what that does. This directive is used for attaching library functions to specific types in the context of contract. So for uh, the directive using A for B, A specifies the library and B specifies a particular type. This means that the library functions in A will receive objects of type B when they're called on such types and they will receive the object of that type as their first parameter. And this directive is applicable or active only within the current contract, including within all its functions. It has no effect outside of the contract in which it is used. So for example, if this directive is used as shown here, saying using safe math for UN256, it means that variables of type UN256 within that contract where this directive is used can be attached functions from the safe math library. Now, if we consider the inheritance hierarchy, we have base classes and then we have the derived classes. If uh, in the derived classes, one would like to call functions further up in the inheritance hierarchy, saying the base classes, this is possible. If we specifically know the contract that has the function that we would like to call, then we could specify that as shown here by calling that function in that contract as contract dot function. And if we want to call the function exactly one level higher up in the flattened inheritance hierarchy, this can be done using the super keyword as shown here. There's a concept of uh, shadowing that was uh, supported in Solidity for the state variables until version 0.6.0 and this effectively allowed state variables of uh, the same name to be used in the derived classes as they were declared in the base classes and these shadowed variables could uh, effectively be used for purposes other than those declared in the base classes. This used to be allowed until version 0.6.0, but uh, it was removed in that version and uh, henceforth because it uh, caused quite a bit of uh, confusion and potentially could lead to serious errors from a security perspective. So as of the latest versions, state variable shadowing is not allowed in Solidity. This is an error. It means that uh, state variables in the derived classes can only be declared if there is no visible state variable with the same name in any of its base classes. We touched upon function overriding. This means that uh, functions in the derived classes can override the virtual functions in their base classes to redefine the logic within them. These overriding functions may also change the visibility of the overridden function 
but this can only be done from changing them from external to public. The mutability of these functions may also be changed, but only to a more stricter one. Following this order, non payable mutability can be changed to either view or pure. View mutability may be changed to pure. And payable mutability is an exception and it cannot be changed to any other mutability. These are some things to be kept in mind when it comes to function overriding. Let's touch upon virtual functions again. Virtual functions are functions without implementation. These have to be marked as virtual outside of interfaces. In interfaces, all functions are automatically considered virtual, so they don't need to use the virtual keyword. However, in abstract contracts, for example, if a function has to be considered as virtual, that is without specifying an implementation, then it should specifically use the virtual keyword to indicate as such. Functions with private visibility cannot be made virtual. These are some of the rules within Solidity for virtual functions. Let's now talk about state variables and overriding. Recall that state variables in Solidity can have different visibilities. One of them is public. Such public state variables have automatic getter functions generated by the Solidity compiler. These getters are really just functions that are generated to allow accessing the value of the public state variable. So they return the value of those state variables from that function. Such public state variables can override external functions in their base classes that have the same name as the public state variables and also the parameter and return types of those external functions match the getter function of these variables. So while public state variables in Solidity can override external functions according to the rules we just specified, they themselves cannot be overridden. Let's now talk about function modifiers and the concept of overriding. Function modifiers can also override each other. This is very similar to how function overriding works, except that there is uh, no concept of overloading for modifiers. The virtual keyword again must be used on the overridden modifier. And the override keyword must be used in the overriding modifier. Again, very similar to the concept of virtual and override functions. Let's now talk about constructors and how they are impacted because of uh, inheritance. With inheritance, when you have uh, classes deriving from other base classes, then the base and the derived classes could have constructors. The constructors of all the base contracts will be called following the linearization rules we touched upon earlier in the context of Solidity. If the base constructors have arguments, then the derived contracts need to specify those arguments. And this can be done either in the inheritance list of the derived contract or it can be explicitly done so within the derived constructor itself. Take a look at one of the illustrative examples in the references to understand how this is done and uh, the differences between the two ways of specifying base constructors that have arguments. Let's talk about name collisions. Name collision is always an error in Solidity. It is an error when any one of the following pairs in a contract 
have the same name due to inheritance. A function and a modifier cannot have the same names in uh, the base and derived classes. Function and an event cannot have the same name. And finally, an event and a modifier also cannot have the same name. If this happens, then this is a compile time error. As we talked about earlier, Solidity supports different types of contracts. There are the typical vanilla contracts that uh, one always encounters, but there are also abstract contracts, interfaces, and libraries. Libraries in particular have several restrictions compared to typical contracts. Libraries cannot have state variables. They cannot inherit from other classes or be inherited themselves. They cannot receive ether. They cannot also be destroyed. They have access to state variables of the calling contract only if they are explicitly supplied. And library functions can only be called directly without the use of delegate call if they do not modify the state. That's if they are view or pure functions. And this is because libraries are assumed to be stateless by default. Let's revisit the concept of EVM storage we talked about in the Ethereum module and uh, see how some of the Solidity concepts map to this storage. Storage, if you recall, is a key value store that uh, maps 256-bit words to 256-bit words. So the key and value are both considered to be the word size supported by the Ethereum virtual machine, which is 256 bits in size. And the instructions used to access the storage are uh, s load to load from storage and s store to write to storage from the stack. And recall that all locations in the storage are initialized to zero. Let's now understand how state variables declared within a smart contract map to the underlying EVM storage. So these state variables are stored in uh, what are known as the different storage slots. Each slot in the EVM storage corresponds to a word size of 256 bits. And the various state variables declared within the smart contracts map to these storage slots in the EVM. And if there are multiple state variables that can fit within the same storage slot depending on their types, then they are done so to maintain a compact representation of the state variables within that storage slot. And the mapping is done in the same order as uh, the declaration of the state variables. So the state variables that are declared within a contract are stored contiguously in their declaration order in the different storage slots of the EVM which means that the first state variable is stored in slot 0, the second one in slot 1, or maybe the same slot 0 if the first variable was of a size smaller than 256 bits and the second one could fit as well within that slot. So except for dynamic arrays and mappings, all the other types of uh, state variables are stored contiguously item after item starting with the first state variable. There is a concept of storage packing in Solidity and the underlying EVM. What this effectively means is that state variables that are declared next to each other, in other words contiguously, are stored within the same storage slot if the size of their types allow us to do so. We call that Solidity supports different types and each type has a default size in bytes. So depending on 
the types of the state variables declared and their underlying sizes, if there are multiple contiguous state variables that need less than 32 bytes, then those are packed into the single storage slot where possible. There are some rules that are followed. The first item in a storage slot is stored lower order aligned. Value types only use as many bytes as are necessary to store them. And when a value type does not fit the remaining part of a storage slot, it is stored in the next storage slot. So this concept of storage packing becomes important when we are looking at a smart contract code and uh, trying to determine which storage slot a particular state variable fits in. And this depends on the other state variables that are declared around it and that follow the rules that we just discussed. State variables of types structs and arrays have uh, specific rules with respect to the storage slot allocation. Such state variables always start a new storage slot as opposed to being packed into existing ones. And the state variables following them also start a new storage slot. The elements of the structs and arrays themselves are stored contiguously right after each other as if they were individual values and depending on their types, the rules we just discussed in the previous slide apply to these as well. Now, how does inheritance affect the storage slot allocation? For contracts that use inheritance, the ordering of state variables is determined by the C3 linearization rule of uh, the contract order starting from the most base word to the most derived contract. And if allowed by any of the rules discussed so far, state variables from the different contracts, the different base and derived contracts are allowed to share the same storage slot with respect to the storage packing concept we talked about. Storage packing allows us to optimize the storage slot layout depending on the types of the state variables. So state variables can be made to have a reduced size type depending on the values that they're supposed to hold, then storage packing allows such state variables to share a storage slot. And this allows the Solidity compiler to combine multiple reads or writes into a single operation when it generates the corresponding byte code. However, if uh, those values, state variables sharing the same slot are not read or written at the same time, depending on the contract logic, this can have an opposite effect, which results in more gas being used than uh, expected. And this is because when one such value of a state variable that shares such slot with other state variables is being read or written, then the entire slot is uh, read or written because that is uh, the size that the EVM and Solidity work with. And now the specific state variable within that slot has to be isolated, separated out for reading or writing. And this is done by masking out all the other state variables that share that slot. And this masking results in additional instructions being generated, which lead to additional gas being used in this case. So depending on the specific sizes of the types and depending on the pattern of reading or writing, the types of state variables that are adjacent to each other in the declarations should be picked for efficient optimization from storage packing. To summarize, the ordering of the state variable declarations within a smart contract impact the layout of uh, their storage slots and affects if uh, multiple state variables declared contiguously can be packed within the same storage slot or uh, if they need separate storage slots. And this packing has a huge impact on the gas costs 
because uh, the instructions that read and write state variables, if you recall, are S loads and S stores. And these are some of the most expensive instructions from a gas cost perspective supported by EVM. S loads cost uh, as much as uh, 2100 gas uh, or 100 gas, depending on how many times the state variables have been read so far in the context of this transaction. S stores cost as much as 20,000 gas in the most uh, recent EVM versions. As an example, if uh, we have three state variables of types uint 128, uint 128, and uint 256 that are declared within the same smart contract contiguously, then these variables would use two storage slots because the first two storage variables can share the same storage slot. The two variables of size 128 bits will fit into the same storage slot, slot zero in this case, which is 256 bits in size. And the third state variable of type UN 256 would go into the second storage slot or slot one. But if the declaration order is slightly changed, as shown here, to put the 256 bit state variable in between the 128 bit variables, now this order would require three storage slots instead of two. The first 128 bit one would go into slot zero. The second one would not fit within slot zero. So it would go into slot one and consume the whole of slot one. The third state variable would then take up slot two. So this would uh, hopefully give you an idea of how the state variable declaration order impacts the number of storage slots, which has uh, a big impact on the gas cost used by that contract.